Hello, in this video I'd like to show you how to install and use our report plugin for Google SketchUp. Installing it, I've already downloaded the zip file from our website and it's actually already been installed on this computer once, but uh, it'll be good to show because you'll have to overwrite some files. It'd be like if you were updating um, the plugin. So the first thing in Vista I need to do is unblock it and then we're going to extract it and we need to put it into the program, this plugins subfolder for Google SketchUp. So we're in the plugins folder and we'll start seeing messages that we're overwriting stuff. So this would be like if you were updating the plugin. If you were doing a clean install, it would just install. And hopefully it won't take four minutes. Two minutes, one minute. All right. It's about done. So now we can look at the plugin. So I'll open up a uh, demo file I have of some SketchUp, or actually some Sketch Data components. So it's a simple kitchen that uh, been drawn using Sketch Data component library. There's the plugin, and we're actually running in version 8, the free version, and it works in Pro or version 7. On this screen here, this is what this screen allows us to send the data up to the server. Up here we have a how it works, which kind of gives a layout of the different screens. We have a button that actually sends the data up to the server. And we have various options here. We have levels, which can be 1 through 8, and whether you want to send pictures or uh, send formulas. And the levels refer to the outliner. So if we look over here on the right, you can see that models can go fairly deep. So depending how much reporting you want to do, um, you could set the levels down. And basically this, since we're having to process data and send data over the internet, if you don't need the data, why process it? Why take the time to send? So if we were to say we're going to look at three levels, we don't want pictures and I'm not going to be looking at formulas and stuff, I can turn it down and I could send the data to the server. So now it's processed out the data, it's been sent, and since we're dealing with an internet connection, we want to verify on the server that we got everything that's processed and ready to report. So they match up. Now if we want to change it to 8 and we want to send pictures and send formulas, we can send the data up again. This will take longer, especially pictures, um, probably twice the time, maybe a little longer, to, for it to extract the, the images of the entities and send them up to the server. So it's been sent, and now we can verify. So in this case, we have 267 photos that went this time that didn't go the other time. And the file is bigger on the attributes because we sent formulas and all the list boxes. Now we can open the report window. I need to log into the report server. So to set up an account, you would go here to sign up and set up an account based on your email address and that helps us keep the data separate on the each user session. Once I log in, I will see the report library. We have currently four folders here. The first one uh, is just some standard reports that we use to kind of uh, debug and uh, look at the data that's in every one of our dynamic components. And then since a component library is like a database, you can set up reports that are specific. Um, once you know the attributes that are going to be standard across, we created reports that are more user-friendly and um, more finished format because we knew uh, the attributes that exist. And we have plans to add some standard reports for um, the Google DC libraries. So let's start and look at uh, this report here. This is kind of similar to the dump that comes out of uh, the data dump that comes out of SketchUp and we filter the report based on layers and I actually put those cabinets on those two layers so I can d filter down to just what I want and we can see this report basically has the entities and then across the top it's uh, flattened out and given us all the, the variables so 
not real pretty report, but uh, a good report that you could using the export function up here, export to Excel and look at, or you could print it. But again, it's more of, much more of an Excel report. Another one we use. Well, here's any list with images, and it's simply filter by layers. Since we set pictures up now, this report will run and well will show us pictures. If we chose not to send pictures, then you wouldn't see the pictures. And then here's a good debug report we use for checking our attributes, and it's a cross reference. And what it does is it breaks it down by the dictionary. So look at dynamic attributes, and then we can pick a particular attribute. Let's say finished right and we can see all the values that are associated in this job. So every one of the cabinets are no except one of them is yes. And we can check the access levels, form labels, options, text. So this is another way to kind of make sure we have the the attribute defined the same way on each one of the cabinets um, from setting up a library. I wouldn't want to have some cabinets be no, yes, and some yes, no. Um, and then some of the standard reports. Just make note here, we've got different icons. Usually, if so if the report uses pictures, we have a little house with the magnifying glass. If it's just a report that requires data, it just looks like a piece of paper. So if you're printing reports that don't require images, which most reports probably will be that way, um, don't take you don't need to have this option turned on because it just you're sending data up there that you don't need to wait on. You don't you don't you don't need it, so why wait on sending it up? But let's look at this uh, standard list with images. Again, it's filtering based on layers, so you can kind of get it's actually filtering and grouping by layers, so you can get the data arranged a little better. So here's the first layer, kitchen buyout. Put our three appliances, gave us descriptions. Doesn't have any uh, there aren't any standard uh, finish left, finish right, because these are appliances. But now you look at Kitchen Elevation 1. We have an image of the product, names, sizes, and we can tell this is a this is hinged right, and you would see finished ends if you saw. So this particular cabinet's finished left. You could expand the drill down and see more detail of other variables that are set. Again, you can search using here. So I found the first occurrence of B1. You can then export to Acrobat, to PDF, to Excel. And when you export to Excel, you still will get the drill downs. It just uses the levels inside the spreadsheet. Um, well, please download it, give it a shot. Uh, let us know if you run any problems. Each library and each model has uh, posed new challenges. So thanks for your time.